professor of medical from institute of engineering and technology for the marriage department so we are in continuing with subject vehicle dynamics and in that subject we have learned something about motorcycle dynamics how that motorcycle and its different parameters are going to react while my motorcycle is in moving condition or we can say in dynamic condition so in previous lecture we have studied about several parameters that affect my overall driving performance as well as riding performance uh, in which we have seen several technical parameters like if i am going to change certain portion of uh, angle or certain portion of diameter or say distance it is going to affect my overall performance of the motorcycle so that is uh, that is true for my two wheelers uh, whether it is for bicycle or it is a motorcycle so in today's lecture we will learn about trail uh, that portion uh, has been learned uh, from that previous lecture the second is wheel flow that is my condition while my vehicle is in moving condition specific, uh, specifically for two wheelers the third one is the location and the height of the center of gravity like uh, if uh, my vehicle is in moving condition like acceleration is there so there are several maneuvers that we are going to perform while driving our motorcycle like acceleration is there deceleration is there sudden braking is there turning cornering so these are the different maneuvers and that are that maneuvers are going to affect my overall uh, center of gravity uh, and it is going to shift it in different maneuvers so that we will learn in our third topic that is location and height of center of gravity so let us begin with the first topic that is trail so for that trail we can say that the trail or caster angle so we have already learned that trail or caster that is the horizontal distance from where the front wheel touches the ground okay so that point at which the wheel touches the ground to where the steering axis intersect the ground so particular this angle we have already called it break angle and that particular distance that is called my trail so basically the driver's balance or stability of that particular vehicle that is going to affect by my this parameter that is called trail basically we have uh, uh, kept our trail in positive side so this is for my trail and trail can vary at the bike leap or steer so according to the type of bike uh, which uh, bike are going to use so according to that type we are going to look upon the trail and trail distance and that is going to affect my overall stability of the vehicle also the comfort of comfort of the driver so this is a basically basic top trail that we are going to refer for my driving performance of that motorcycle moving further that is a top that is called my wheel flow so in this video you can see that there are several steering condition at which driver can put several forces uh, put some force to the steering wheel and how that steering wheel or steering uh, is going to react with that force and how it is going to stabilize by itself that we can see and particularly uh, that down we can call it as wheel flow so here three examples of steering has been given in this video in which you can see that the driver is uh, there and he is trying to change or apply some forces to the steering wheel so you can see that according to the force the steering is going to flop or not so for the first cycle we can say that that is the perfect the second cycle in which you can see that if i am going to apply several force to the steering portion and it is very bad uh, as you can see that the steering goes to the left severe left or severe right by that force so this is not desirable condition for my steering and for the third part that is the third steering system in which you can see that the effect of forces by applying uh, to the steering so here you can see that the steering movement has not been so that far so it cannot easily so it can easily controlled by the 
driver. So it is my desirable or ideal steering system. So according to that, that is my perfect or absolute perfect steering geometry. So basically in definition term, we can say that wheel flow that refers to the steering behavior in which bicycle or motorcycle tends to turn more than expected. Okay, so if I'm applying to some, some force to the steering and uh, with the force, uh, according to the expectation, it is tends to turn more than my expectation. So that term that is called my flopping. So that is motorcycle flopping and wheel flop that is caused by lowering the front end of that bicycle or motorcycle. So basically cruiser bike. So wheel flop uh, is the effect for mainly for the cruiser bikes at which you can see that the driver is very comfortable in that position and lowering that front end. So this is my term about wheel flop. Moving further, we, can, we will see about the location and height of center of gravity. As I have said, there are several possibilities of changing center of gravity in different manuals like accelerating, decelerating, turning and uh, sudden braking. So according to the manuals, my center of gravity is going to change. So in the diagram, you can see that it is symbolized by cross or circle symbol center of gravity and a typical motorcycle center of gravity that is located midway between the front and rear axle. So basically we can say that the front wheel is taking no load due to the engine is at frontal portion. So we can say that the center of gravity is mainly slightly towards my front with a very nearer to the front wheel. So that is for my static condition. Now let us see how to check or how to measure the center of gravity. So I have an example over here in which one bike is there. Uh, the overall weight is around uh, 589 pound. And here I have mentioned several data like wheel base is 59.37 inches. The front wheel that weighs around 300 pounds and rear, rear wheel that weighs around 289 pounds. So basically we can say that the engine is mounted at front. So we can say that the front portion is having more weight than the rear. Uh, so with the help of calculation we can say that the total weight uh, so 289 that is uh, by overall weight that is 589 that gives me 29.13 inches of total distance. So for that we can say that the center of gravity that is 29.13 inches after my front wheel. So horizontal distance has been calculated from this method. Now moving further there is a method to identify or to calculate the vertical uh, distance where the center of gravity is going to be there. So for that I have to lift my rear wheel around 20 to 21 inches and according to that calculation or mathematical calculation uh, I have to find my horizontal distance. So in uh, this particular video you have seen that 11.5 inches that has been calculated for that area. So ultimately I can say that for particular 589 pound of bike that is having center of gravity that is 29.30 inch after uh, my front wheel and 11.5 inch at vertical distance. So this is uh, where, how to find center of gravity and according to that acceleration in different maneuvers that center of gravity has been changed. So that is all about today. Thank you.